Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. If you're out there, say hi in the comments below. Um, I'm venturing into new territory. This is pretty scary for me because, um, I mean, I've been doing, I've been giving piano lessons uh, online for the past about five weeks, and I've been having a blast with it, but um, I've been really nervous about doing reviews and demos because there's just a lot more to think about I'm using OBS. I'm getting more familiar with the system. I'm I'm loving it. Um, but as you can tell, like there there's a lot to think about with the the intro video, uh, the the demo video, and then the live portion of it. Um, trying to get that all synced up and and ready to go. It, it's just a lot um, a lot more nerve wracking than than preparing everything beforehand. Plus. Um, you know, I can't really edit out my ums and likes, you know, you know the verbal fillers. Uh, I'm not I'm not that great at, at uh, impromptu speaking, but I think I'm getting a little bit better at it. So um, hopefully you can hear me great out there. Yeah, uh, this is uh, hi, Tony. Thanks for joining. Um, this is my review of vert. I think they're called Virtues Mojo to horn section. Um, usually I, I'm reviewing guitars and, and, uh, basses, pianos, that kind of stuff, stuff I'm more comfortable with, but, um, I have a lot more libraries than that. I, I, as you can see from my, just my contact list, I have a bunch of stuff. Um, but I got in touch with, with, uh, Virtu and asked them if I could, if I could try this software out. They were, they said, yes. Um, it's a, it's a big task. This is a huge library. There's many sounds there's a lot of different uh, parameters thank you tony um there's a lot of different parameters that that you have to think about or a lot of different facets of, uh, of a library that you have to think about compared to um compared to piano or or uh, bass because we have several instruments here just the the instrument list i'm going to go through it really quickly alto sax baritone bass trombone flugelhorn mute trumpet tenor sax tenor trombone, trumpet one, trumpet two, and tuba. Um, now I'll, I'll s oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> let me do that again. I was reading Session Horns Pro. Um, alto sax, ba berry sax, bass trombone, clarinet, flugelhorn, French horn, piccolo trumpet, soprano sax, tenor sax, trombone, muted trombone, um, tr muted trumpet, and then regular trumpet. Uh, so basically the instruments that you would find in a um, in a big band setting but not just big band I mean you can you can use this for other types of of music which which I do uh, super jet 2771 this is I think it's on sale right now for drum roll and uh, hold on to your seats this is 400 bucks um, I've seen it in some places for 500. Now, like, who would be crazy enough to spend that much money? Well, well, um, <laughs> I've spent more than that on on a, a library of of multiple instruments before. Um, for example, I I use Session Horns Pro um, live and in the studio because I'm in a a Latin band. We play we play salsa, we play um, merengue. Uh, cumbias, all sorts of Latin style music that that use brass. So I I wanted a library that that had realistic brass sounds that that also sounded good in the studio, um, because a lot of times those those two points selling points are at odds with each other. Uh, so I was really excited to hear Mojo Two because this is I heard good things about uh, Mojo One, and the demos uh, online were incredible. So um, enough talking. I'm I'm gonna play a little bit of the saxophone this is the alto sax this is their uh, sustain 
articulation. Then I'll talk about the different features. So here is the alto sax. Whoa, that is not sustain. One second. Okay, that's where it ends. All right. Um, right off the bat, I like the sound. It, it's uh, you can hear the key noise, which I like to hear. That's a good level of detail. This setting right now is on uh, touch response, so if I hit it softly, it plays soft. And then if I hit it hard, it responds in kind. All right, so an overview of this. Aside from the list of instruments, on the top you have different mix settings. Um, this is one of their selling points is that you have a uh, modern sound, which is ha has a brighter sound, more detailed. Retro, I think they concentrate more on the mids. Vintage um, brings out more uh, different characteristics of the sound. Gives it a, that old uh, gramophone sound, I think. And then vintage is even vintage too is uh, a little different from that. That's pretty cool. Although I would say I would, my personally I would never use these these EQ settings just because it's not the type of music that I play. But if you're doing film stuff um, and you want that that ease of having a preset EQ or um, yeah, a, a, like a premix. That's good. All right, here in the performance section, um, you have articulation controls because this each instrument comes with different articulations, and I'll go through the list right now. We have sustains, um, staccato, stabs. You know, I'm going to change the octave on this. That way I could access it through key switching. Stabs, bend down, run down, run up, doits, I think that's how they're called. Correct me, brass players, rise to hit, shakes. Trills, these are swells, and crescendos. Oh, sorry, I have one more. And we have falls. I love hearing that clicking sound, the keys. Okay, so aside from having um, having key switching capabilities. Right here on the this uh, light blue section, that shows your your uh, note range, your playing range, and over here the lavender and the pink, that uh, gives you different types of endings. So this is like more of a performance feature mm -hmm. function. Let's see. So this is just a normal, normal ending, and here when you release it, it plays a doit. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. And then this is a fall. And then this release is a trill. And then a shake. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know how, how easy that would be to use in a live, live performance, but I don't think this is really intended for live performance. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll explain that in a, in a minute. So let's go up here to the articulation controls. So we have the, our key switches, which uh, give us a, our different articulations, sustain, staccato, stabs, etc. But um, if you weren't satisfied with how those sounded, you have a lot more control over, over 
uh, individual parameters within those articulations. So th that's one of the cool things about this plugin is that you get to um, get to customize it to your playing style. So for example, in the sustain menu or in the global menu, we have um, like things like round robin, how you cycle it if you want it off, pitch bend, um, you can make that go larger than a whole step. Velocity curve, if you if you want to play very softly or very loudly, they have very convex, um, convex, linear, concave, and very concave. So I'm barely pressing that. I'll put it back to linear. Key noise, you can um, you can tell it how much key you want to hear. So that's none. And then the probability of when it does. So um, if you go to their page, their, their website, you can hear all this stuff. I, I'm just repeating stuff. I'm repeating things that they share on their website, and they're more familiar with it. So I don't want to waste your time uh, talking about all of these features. So I'll, I'll um, only hit the ones that are important to me. So um, this is the global settings. Then you go into your different articulations like sustain. We have different types of vibrato, which is cool. The simulated, the real sounds, sounds like a, um, like a real vibrato. Then simulated, you can actually control these in right clicking. You can learn, um, uh, it can learn which CC number you want to use. Right now I have it set to, uh, to my, mod wheel all right and then you have your volume your accent and release sample you can control dynamics through velocity meaning how hard you hit the key or through uh, control through a type of controller like a knob or, or a wheel or, or fader and uh, this gives you, this is better for like MIDI, for uh, programming. Velocity is better for like live performance or, or playing a keyboard. Now, uh, they have something called legato, legato mode. And this is uh, one of the complaints I have about this thing is that I don't really like the legato on it. Legato is, if you're not familiar with what that is, that's the, um, that's whenever you connect one note to another it has that kind of a uh, a glide to it there's it's connected and it's smooth um, and typically P S companies who record legato they record those actual transitions from note to note I'm not sure the way that virtue did it uh, but it doesn't sound realistic to me that part of it As a matter of fact, I think when you put on legato mode, put it in legato mode, it doesn't sound, it sounds more fake. Now, I'm going to compare it to uh, Session Horns Pro, their alto sax, and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Now, I, I hate doing this. I, I hate talking negatively about something, but I want you to uh, hear the difference. The transition is more transparent while on um, mojo horns. That transition is a little bit more obvious or it's a little more artificial. Now let me, let's hear mojo. Ew. Let's hear session horns again I'm gonna do that little trill to me that just sounds so much nicer however I mean, you can control different parameters within the legato like the transition volume but I messed with this for a long time and could not get it to sound as realistic as as uh, session horns
It doesn't sound horrible. It just compared to, compared to the other one, it, it just it doesn't sound as real. Um, you can can you can customize the transition volume and length. Right now, it's set to a a short transition length, which is what I wanted. Um, let's hear how it sounds with more. So it has this weird swell in it. That's better. But it, I still have some weird dynamic issues in there. Let's see. Transition volume by v velocity. Another difference I'll, I'll say, and I wasn't intending to make this a comparison video, but uh, I, I wanted to focus mostly on Mojo. Um, but another difference I would say is that Mojo horns sound more sterile, um, sort of like they don't have character. If you hear professional horn players, like the um, great artists, you'll hear a, a distinct character in the way that they play. It's sort of like their signature whether it's breathiness or whether it's um, like sliding up to a note a lot. Uh, Mojo horn is very basic. And I'm not, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that it's uh, as if they told someone, hey, play play this note, just play, play an F. However, um, session horns, and I, and I really like this, has a lot more character to it as if it was recorded by a famous artist. That's why it sounds really expressive when you play it. Let me hear without vibrato. Yeah, that's really fun to play. All right, uh, let's let's go to the other articulations, and I, I'm not going to spend all my time on alto sax. And fair warning, this is going to be a long video because uh, I'm going to go through several instruments, not all of them, because some instruments are related, and a lot of the uh, features are going to carry over. A lot of the opinions are going to carry over, I should say. But let's go to staccato. <laughs> Now, if you notice, there's a there's sort of a long release on these. You can fix that in the release sample volume, I think. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. The uh, release timing right here. I like to have it about between 30 and 40 milliseconds. Maybe a little less than that. That's still a little long for this, the kind of stuff I do. Especially if you're playing funk, you want that really quick attack and release. Attack amount, release sample. There's a lot of different, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I, I made a mistake. I, <laughs> I was not in the uh, staccato menu. So here's a release. Oops, that sounds really bad. Now, this is a problem that I run into sometimes with the release. Uh, when I want it really short, I get this popping sound. And I think for something that costs $400, or it's on sale for $400, for that much, it should not have these issues. That's better right there. Why they have the polyphony on staccato i have no idea that seems like something that should be on the global parameters 
or the global settings. But uh, in all honesty, it, it's it's cool in one way that they have all these different options, but at the same time, it makes the um, it makes the plugin a little cumbersome because you have to go in and get everything just right. Whereas something like this, where uh, on Session Horns Pro, uh, you don't have to th really think about that. All right, back to Mojo. Let's go to Stabs. I'm gonna change the release on the stabs. So that's like an accented note. Now, as you get into the more, uh, the uh, different articulations like bend down, octave runs, then this starts getting more useful if you're getting it, if you're getting into like uh, big band stuff with more uh, complex runs and uh, and playing rather than just uh, you know your regular legato and staccato playing. I like that that you have for some of these like the falls you have control over. Um, whether you want it medium or long. Oh, that's not a fall. But things like this are, you can find it in a much more convenient, uh, much more convenient way than in uh, Session Horns Pro. For example, you can either access it through key switching or your pitch bend. If I bend the key switch, I mean, if I bend the pitch wheel all the way down, I get a quick fall. If I do it uh, like in the middle, it's a little longer and then closer to the middle. It's a lot longer. Conversely, if I go the other way, I get that, that rise. I think that's really cool. A lot more logical, if you ask me. Let's see. I apologize if I'm not getting to your comments quickly. Um, my screen is filled up right now at the moment, and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to watch, watch everything, watch the YouTube screen, my OBS screen, and and the Mojo. How bright and slammed. Almost overblown, can you get the stabs like Funky's Fortanda articulation? I haven't heard Mojo perform any big band aggressive stabs. Seems all towards mellow. Let me let me check that out right now. The best solo sax horns VSTs I've heard so far is sample modeling. Um I don't know how to pronounce your name. K-A-C-E-P-R-U. Um But I've I've heard really good stuff from them and I hope one day I can review them, but there are just so many companies. They are rather hard to use and you need a lot of patience. Yeah, yeah. In this case, it seems like the the patience that you have in, um, or the patience that's required in Mojo doesn't really pay off as much as something like that I've heard from sample modeling. But it, it's, it's not bad. It's just, it's a little disappointing. Uh, let, me, let me go to the stabs. Unfortunately, they don't have any control over the accents on the stabs. Maybe in the global settings. Um, nope. Sustains. Like on the sustains, they have the attack accent. Let me see. No, it doesn't have. To answer your question, Tony, uh, it's kind of limited in that in that area. Whereas, let's see, 
mojo horns. Let's see how, how they do in that area. They have that growl. Um, Yeah, I, I can try the velocity curve. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. The very convex. Maybe on staccato? No, not even on staccato. All right, let's listen to another instrument. I'm getting tired of the saxophone sound. I'm kidding, but I do want to listen to something else. Let's hear Barry Sax. Uh, sorry that you have to, s oops, sorry that you have to sit through me loading the instruments. Uh, some of these instruments are gigantic. This entire library is, is big. I think it's, um, Somewhere up there in like uh, above 70 gigabytes. It's really huge and it took a long time to download even with my fast internet. All right, here, here is Barry Saxis. This one is not too, too big. Barris, sorry if I mispronounce your name, 100 gigabytes. You know, let me, let me check. Let me check my hard drive. Yeah, I don't remember it being, it being that much. Mojo horns. I have 64.87, so maybe, maybe I didn't download everything and that's why it's, it doesn't sound as impressive. But um, I tried downloading it twice because I had had issues the first time. Um, so I downloaded it again and made sure that I have had all the samples. And this time it didn't tell me that anything was missing. So, uh. all right, let's hear the different articulations in here. So it's not very inspiring um, right out of the box. You have to you have to get everything specific way oh another complaint i have yeah may, maybe it is because it's compressed another complaint i have about this and this is something i heard them respond to on their youtube page channel is that you can't unload any of the articulations so the berry sax for example is almost one gigabyte in size and that they load all the articulations right here so they're, they're, they're at your disposal, but you can't turn any of them off as you can do here in uh, session horns. For example, this alto sax is 436 megabytes. But if I take off the rip, make that key switch empty, uh, vibrato, non-vibrato, you can see the memory uh, bank going down, getting smaller. The memory usage is, gets smaller, 97. And that's really handy. I know that you could optimize or you could um, purge samples, but this is a really frustrating feature, especially if you're playing something live, which which I use uh, Session Horns Pro for. Maybe I should change my expectation on this. All right, um, you can imagine the the different sounds for the berry sax. Let's get go to the next instrument, um, bass trombone. I believe this is a an even bigger file. Um, I loaded a trombone and it took up four gigabytes of RAM, which is just ridiculous. So here it is. I have a pretty quick hard drive. This one's not as big, I think. Yeah, one point nine gigabytes. That's still big, but it's it's not as big. <laughs> Let's 
it's your staccato. That's not staccato. Let's listen to the clarinet. I don't really like that bass trombone. Now, to, to be fair, sorry about the, the weird robotic sound, the weird uh, um, stuttering sound of, of my computer. It makes that sound whenever I load an instrument. Uh, to be fair, when you get into the mixer section, and this is a pretty cool thing, you have different mic settings and it makes it sound better uh, or the effects set, uh, the the effects menu because you can change the EQ, you can uh, add amplifiers to it, change the stereo setting, the spread, add delay, reverb. Let's hear how this sounds. Very giant hall. So this is a good feature right here, having the effects. Although nowadays, if you're using a DAW, um, you can have built-in effects there, but it's still nice. Uh, I was having an issue before where I I had reverb on like, let's say legato. And then when I switched over to sustain, or I'm um, sorry, staccato, the the effect turned off. Right here, um, it's staying on. That's a good thing. Yeah, um, Mojo said, or Virtue said that they were going to add that feature later where you can uh, unload samples and save. So that's something to look forward to. That doesn't sound bad. That sounds that sounds good actually. Um, let me hear. I'm gonna play a few patches from a few sounds from um, session horns. <laughs> Is that that overblown sound you were talking about, Tony? This is, I like this, uh, this attack. All right, let's listen to another sound from them. Let's, let's hear a trumpet. No, this is pretty big. Oh no, actually, never mind. <laughs> uh, point seventy is smaller. All right. So this 
So again, uh, do you see what I'm talking about, about the, the almost clinical sound of an instrument? There's not much character to it, if any. Now let's hear it with real vibrato. That sounds nice. Now with the legato mode on. See, I like to hear the natural trend, natural legato from uh, like an, when an, when a trumpet player plays an octave. There's almost this roll, this tonguing ba ba ra ba. I think you might be able to hear it on on this one. Oh. I always forget to set it to port A1. See, I'm only hitting two keys. And you get that, you get some of the notes in between, which I love. That's realistic. All right, let's go back. Again, it's not terrible. It's just not as good, um, that and that's frustrating to me because uh, you, you want I want to like it, I want to love it. Um, let's hear let's hear different articulations though. Like staccato. This is session horns pro. Oh, um, something I was thinking about earlier is the fact that the tr the range on the trumpet, especially for being something marketed toward big band music, is very, very limited. And I, I don't know if there's a feature to increase the range, but I haven't found it. Um, I'll give you an example. It's just when I hear it, when I think of a trumpet in big band, I think of those whistle tones, you know, getting high up there into the stratosphere. Uh, let me play it. Hi, Troy. Thanks for joining us. See, I want it needs to go higher than this. Let's hear this. Uh, session horns. See, it goes a uh, fourth above that. It's just so much more playable. Um, I'll do one more instrument because I, I'm I'm getting a little frustrated here. Let's let's hear the French horn. Loading, loading, loading. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, good. Um, I don't think this is going to be as big. Oh, that's not French horn. Oh. 
All right, one thing I haven't shown you is how it sounds with the different micings. So this is a full mix, close mic. I'm gonna turn these on. It's gonna load a lot more samples, so you're gonna hear. Um, it's gonna sound more full, I guess. You'll you'll have a better image. But it takes up a lot more RAM. actually sounds really good. And over here on the right side, we have an ensemble feature, which I think it digitally uh, gives gives it a sound as if the you have more players. So right now it's on solo. And then... four six let me hear the legato Ooh, some weird things are happening there I agree that that um, it's how it works in the big picture. Like you said, um, I think this takes a lot of work to to sound good. The, like the the um, the demo that I had at the beginning of this video, it didn't take too long to do it, but uh, I had to tweak some of the the legato and and uh, stabs to get it just right, just the way I wanted. Um, I don't like. I don't like having to do that or having to work on something for so long, especially because you have to work with the in, the instruments individually. And uh, for me, it just takes a long time. Some people, that's that's just part of their line of work. So I'm not going to say that this is a, a deal breaker for me. Um, let me turn these off. One thing I wish that they did have was a uh, live performance feature, like they do, like they have on Session Horns Pro. Uh, this wouldn't really require more recording or more sampling. It would just require different, uh, different algorithm or setup. But I love the performance mode in session horns. So you have your solo instruments, and then you have your uh, your ensemble, which lets you swap out different instruments change their octave so let's hear this itself Some of their instruments are just gorgeous, like the flugelhorn. And if you're just joining us, uh, I'm right now on this portion of the review. I'm comparing it to I'm comparing Mojo horns to Session Horns Pro. Session Horns Pro is, uh, is years old, but it's still a very solid sample library.
I don't think anyone's playing that flugelhorn. <laughs> oh, that was a huge fail. Let's hear it. Let's hear it now. There's a human characteristic to to uh, session horns that I just love. Oops, let me hear that. That muted trumpet. They did Session Strings Pro 2. Hopefully we get the horns. Yeah, yeah, I'm really hoping for an update to Session Horns. I think Session Horns Pro, I, I'm i not sure if it costs 200 bucks, but I, I know that it's included in, uh, in the complete library from Native Instruments, which... Uh, that's how I got this. Uh, I, th I think it's a much better deal than than spending four hundred bucks on um, Mojo Two. This is not to me. This is not worth four hundred bucks, especially that being the sale price. Uh, what else haven't I talked about? We have our key mapping section. I re I didn't really get too much into this. It's more about uh, functionality rather than the quality of the sound or the realism of of the sound well um that's all i'm going to talk about today uh i don't want this video to be too long but if you're out there thank you for watching this i hope this was a, an informative video i hope to help you make a an informed decision a, a good decision um i think in summary i think it's a good library i think it has a lot of good features um it's even though it gives you a lot of customization options, it's not it, the the what you yield from that is not um, it's not much, or it's not enough. I I should say in comparison to Session Horns Pro, and I I honestly was really disappointed with this, and I I messed with it for a couple of hours, and then I went back to it later on just to see if I missed something, but it, I had the same feeling about it i didn't i didn't get the performance i wanted out of it um so i i wouldn't buy this personally but it might be for you um anyways thanks for watching and please give this video a thumbs up and uh if you haven't done so please subscribe and thanks for joining me